What's up, Happy Fabricators? In this video, we're going to build a micro jet boat that fits on my welding table. What this is, is what they call a six foot micro mini jet boat. Now, though I'm well versed in aluminum fabrication, I have personally never owned a boat before. So this is where I'm going to need your guys' help and opinions to get this thing set up. Now I'm getting excited. Let's tear this thing open and see what we got. And yes, I do own a real chainsaw, but it's nine o'clock at night and I don't wanna piss the neighbors off. But this thing's really great. Okay, so we got the bottom of the boat all squeezed together. We got our keel strip in there. I think we're in the right spot. I think we're pretty flat, not twisted up. I got my stringers placed in. I hope those are in the right spot. My motor is somewhere else, and I don't know exactly where the motor mounts sit, but we definitely have the technology to fabric cobble things, so I'm pretty sure we can make it work. I don't remember what these pieces are called, but we got these all tacked in, and I think the next step is to start wrapping the sides of this thing so it's gonna be interesting to do by myself Let's see if we can do this okay so that actually went better than I thought it was I have it stitched all the way up to here but now I think I'm gonna stick the other side on so that I can get to the same point and then hopefully stick some ratchet straps around this and slowly start closing this nose in Okay, so I wanted to just take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Prime Weld. If you don't know already, Prime Weld is a company that provides TIG welders, MIG welders, stick welders, plasma cutters, and an assortment of other fabrication tools and accessories for a very affordable price. As you've probably seen in my videos, I've been using Prime Weld tools and accessories for a little over three years, long before they ever sponsored any of my videos and I've been very happy with the result. Not only are their prices outstanding for the quality of product you get, but their seven day a week customer service is second to none. Let's get back to our build. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a situation here. We've got this thing all set up. Let me back out so you can see it. And I've got the engine cover mocked up as the seat backer right now because the engine cover is right here and needs to be trimmed down. But I have it measured out with the engine cover where the bulkhead would be, which is right in here. Which that should be plenty of room to fit our engine and stuff, but the problem we're having is a leg room. So, sorry about the view, but you get the picture here with it. In this position, we are, to put it lightly, shin digging and not the good kind of shin digging. So I'm not trying to break any records here on having the smallest boat, and I think it's gonna be worth it to stretch this out. So we're gonna, I'm gonna move the seat back six inches and show you the difference that we got. So just a quick recap, this is where we're at with the factory setting. And this is where we're at if I stretch it six inches. As you can see, I can almost stick my legs out straight, but I just think it's gonna be worth it to have that extra comfort 
and six inches isn't going to make that much longer. Instead of a six foot boat, it's going to be a six and a half foot boat. So I think I can live with that. It'll be a little more work, but that means you guys get more content. So let's do it. So I've been thinking about this for a little bit and got this taped off. And I think this is how I'm going to approach this. I think I'm going to actually move the entire transom back six inches. So I think I'm going to cut it. I mapped this out so that it's actually six and a half inches from my cut here to the corner. And I think this will be the easiest way to blend it. So I'm gonna cut down here, over, and then straight down. So that way if we leave the Jetstream logo, and then with this six and a half inches, if I move it over six, that gives us a half inch of overlap to keep everything aligned. And then I can literally stick and pre-bend six inch flat bar and set it in here and set it in there. And so we'll just cut all the way along the bottom here and we'll lay in our flat bar. And then for strength wise, I will lengthen these struts or stringers, what you wanna call them, all the way back to the transom. And then also our jet plenum will be welded in. That will help tie in across all that. And I think we'll have plenty of strength there. So we're gonna order that material up and get on it. Okay, so our six inch mini jet boat extension kit just showed up, some assembly required. Let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, we got this thing cut apart and we are fully committed now. Um, you can kind of see the concept here. I have it set and kind of mocked up, but what my plan is, is to be able to take this half inch flat stock, which is, is the same gauge, and basically just fill the void. I have to stretch it out just a little bit, but in theory, I just need to break these edges so that we have our under cut here and then weld the chunk in here, weld the chunk in here, and then our bottom. Okay, so I got these pieces all bent up. I did it at work because I've got a little swag off-road kit and I need to get one of those for my shop, but this should fit. One thing I did do, I prepped all these edges with a bevel. I don't know if you can see this, probably not on the edge. And I beveled both sides of that and that is in order to get as much penetration as we can. This TIG 325 shouldn't have a problem blowing through eighth inch, but we just want to ensure that we get full penetration especially because I'm gonna grind the bottom flush so we get good uh, smooth surface tension for the water. I'll probably leave the inside welds in just for maximum strength there. Okay, so another day, we've got our top pieces all formed and fit in here. They went in pretty good. It's a little weird because the way this is press broke, it kind of slightly tapers out and my pieces are flat. So I think I'm gonna have just a tiny bit of a gap to fill here. I don't think it's gonna be too big of a problem. The bottom piece fit in real nicely here. So I just have to cut my flat bar to go right in here. Hopefully, I got these new tools that I wanna try out. I've seen these online for a while. And I could probably make something like this, but for the price that these were, these were really cheap. But basically, in essence, what it is, is we've got a box with a slot in it, and it's got a wing nut and a stud. And then this little guy, so you can slide this between your joint, and then slide this guy in, and snug it down. It's kind of like those things that level your tile. So here I put a piece together just to kind of show you and represent what's going on here. You can see that that slot goes through the pieces of sheet metal and it's pulling them down so that they're in the perfect plane with each other but they were pretty cheap I think I don't remember I think it was like 20 bucks for 16 of them so probably couldn't even make them for that price Okay, so this is where we're at. We got our back half all spliced in. As you can see, we're six inches longer than we used to be. 
So we still got to get the swim deck in. And you can see this is our engine cover. We still got to get the bulkhead in and there's some welding to do on the inside here. I think the next project for the boat is going to be figuring out the jet plenum and getting this motor mounted in here. But before we do that, I think we're going to make a jib crane for the shop because moving this thing around, I think I'm going to throw my back out. It's not that this thing is overly heavy. It's actually pretty light. I think the whole, the whole hole itself weighs probably 50 pounds, but it's just awkward trying to lift it and maneuver it. And from going to the ground up on the fabrication table, I think I'm going to end up pulling something. And I've always wanted a jib crane in the garage anyways. So more than likely, the next video, stay tuned, is going to be a jib crane build, just in case you want to build one in your shop. And we'll see you on the next one. Once again, thanks for watching AM Custom Fab. If you want to see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are going to pop up here. If you want to be notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button and ring the little bell. It's free to do so. And go build something, guys.